everyone, here we are with the 10 ready uh, TCAP practice test for integrated math 2. See, there she is. Uh, question number 3, which is in subpart 1, which means no calculator. This one deals with uh, imaginary numbers or complex numbers, really, because it has a, a component with it that's a constant. Now, the thing you have to know before you even start is that i's value is equal to the square root of negative 1. Not a big deal, we'll just leave i here, I don't have to work that out very much. But the real thing I have to know is that if I square i, that means the square root of negative 1 squared. And as you know, the square root and square are like, you know, that's the opposite operation. The, you know, they're enemies, I guess, I don't know. They just defeat each other, essentially. So if I have the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, I'm getting there. Um, they'll cancel each other out, and I'll just be left with the uh, the radicand, or the thing inside the square root, or in this case. So really, it's equal to negative one. Just a traditional negative one. It just acts as a constant in that in that term, or a multiplier, depending on how you're doing it. Why does that matter? Because when I multiply this times this, I'm going to get uh, i squared, and I need to learn to deal with that. Now. The big deal is I'm multiplying them together. You see how there's no sign in between it. The the uh, pr the terms are touching, which means multiply. So I'll do four times two, it gives me eight. I'll do two times uh, two i, which is just four i. Do you have to write these steps out? No, it does make it helpful for you. And let's set it just clacking in a calculator. This is not a question you should miss. So don't be that person who makes careless mistakes because you try to fly through it. Spend the extra five seconds it takes to write down all the numbers. Um, then negative 3i times 4 gives you negative 12i. Negative 3i times positive 2i gives me negative 6i squared. Now the first thing I'm going to do is look for any like terms. And you can treat the i in this case almost like a variable so 8 just drops down. 4 minus 12 gives me negative 8. I don't know why I wrote plus there. I never do that. I never write the sign down until just now, of course. I just look at the signs. And remember, the numbers can only see the signs directly in front of them, So the, or the coefficients, I should say. So 4 is positive, 12 is negative, so you just say 4 minus 12. If this was negative 4, you'd say negative 4 minus 12. But in this case, you don't do that, so minus 8i because negative 12 plus 4 is negative 8. And then finally I need to deal with negative 6i squared. So I'll just bring that down here and then I'll pull out the concept over to this side of the equation. This is negative 6 times i squared and like I said before i squared is the same as negative 1 so negative 6 times negative 1 gives me positive 6. So that's the takeaway I'm going to bring back over here. 8 minus 8i plus 6. And now I'm looking at some more like terms. Positive 8 plus 6 gives me 14. So 14 minus, if my pen will write, minus 8i. And that's it. It's not a super difficult question, but it is a type of question that you could easily miss. Like you just forget that the, the i squared is even there, and then you do 8 minus 6, and that's how you get this answer. Um, you kind of just combine everything together and get 6i, or make all the numbers go away, and it becomes 14. But make sure that you just take the time to write out maybe this step and then you should be able to get to this one relatively easily. But having this here gives you a place to go back to if there's, I don't know, if there's a fly in a classroom, I can get distracted. So it just gives you a place to go with your thoughts.